Hello and welcome to On Your Lane. This is a best place for ambitious people who are taking charge of their lives, making that income, making that impact and living a fulfilling life. How are you doing? Today I'm talking about something exciting. It's about your ability to hear God for yourself. How can you effectively study the Bible and be able to hear God? Oh, this is going to be a game changer. Why? Because in this life, I believe it's more spiritual than it is physical. Because really, if you look at people who have achieved big things in this life, it makes you wonder, how did they get the tenacity? How were they bold enough to prevail in spite of all these challenges? Who was motivating and inspiring them? People judge. People have opinions. How were they able to resist all that? There is always a power that is backing up, a confidence, a faith that backs people up to do things that are crazy good or crazy impactful. And that's our core in this life, right? To do crazy, big, impactful things. And therefore, the faith factor cannot be ignored. And for Christians, the faith factor is really hearing God for yourself and being able to get into the Bible and get instructions and strategies for your business, for your relationships that you can apply on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, my experience has been that as I go deeper with God, I get bolder in my life. As I get deeper with God, I get clearer on my vision and I get to believe that vision and make moves towards that vision. So it's important for us to get the faith factor in place. And here I'm going to share what has worked for me to ensure that I get personal instructions, not general instructions, but personal instructions that move my life forward. The first thing you must do is make a plan. Plan for your God time. Somehow for spiritual things, we think they'll happen magically. They'll just flow into our lives. And then we'll just be like, oh, I prayed. Oh, I spent time. Oh, I heard God. No, you have to plan for it because there are multiple things that are vying for your attention. And if you just let it flow, it will flow to the negative place or it will flow to busyness. It will flow to other things. But if you want to be intentional and you want to be able to hear God for yourself, if you are tired of going to the left, to the right, when everybody's running, you're running. When everybody's crying, you're crying. You want to be strong and bold in your life, in the decisions you make. Then you have to plan for the time you will spend with God. Why is that important? Because things don't happen naturally, all right? And especially this, which is going to be really valuable for you. It just won't happen in a flash. So make a plan. If we're going to meet up, right? You and I, and I, I, I'd be like, okay, we'll meet up sometime in the week. Is that going to happen? No. If I say, okay, on Tuesday, at some point, we should call each other. Is that going to happen? No. You have to be more specific. You have to say, Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we're going to meet up. And at 2 o'clock, we are going to meet up. So set a time, set a location, and get to it. And don't set it at a bedtime before I sleep. I'm going to read my Bible. That is just setting yourself up for failure. And you feel guilty, and it's just unnecessary. Set your prime time. And for me, that has meant I do it very early in the morning when I'm fresh and there's little disturbances, all right? So set a time, set a location, set a mood, okay? Be clear where you're meeting God. I'm meeting him in my closet at 2 a.m. I'm meeting him in my closet at 5 a.m. That will go a long way. The second thing is to invite the Holy Spirit. This is tricky if you're not saved. If you're not a Christian who has invited Jesus to come into your life, this can be a little shaky. But... You can do that just now and say, Jesus, I know I'm here for a reason. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please give me meaning. Give me meaning. Show me what to do. And he'll come in. And when I say he'll come in, sometimes we think there'll be something dramatic. But no, you have a new conviction, a new knowing, and a new direction in your life. Right? So when you're spending time with God, it's not empty. It's not you just reading a book and saying, oh my goodness, I can't wait to be done. It will be with a fresh fresh presence that is there leading you and directing you. You read the same scripture and you go like, what? This was here? Oh, I do that all the time in my Bible studies. So I would say invite the Holy Spirit into your Bible study. Acknowledge that this is spiritual, right? Acknowledge that you can only understand so far. Acknowledge that you need interpretation. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He interprets things to you. He highlights things to you. And then you go back and say, wow. I didn't know that's what God wanted for my life. I was reading the story of David the other day. It's a story I had read over and over and God showed me something new, right? But it was like this giant was defeated, not because David 
was strong or bold at that day, but because David had allowed me to train him in private. That was something I had missed for years. And this was like revealed to me and it was really resonating with the season I was in. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit when you invite him in your studies. You acknowledge that this is spiritual and therefore we need a spiritual interpreter and the Holy Spirit will show you revelations. And having head knowledge is different from having a revelation. A revelation is beyond the knowledge. It's like it becomes personal to you. It empowers you. It reveals, it opens your eyes. You're like, what? You know, and you feel bold enough to follow through that instruction. When it's knowledge, you just know God loves me. Okay. And when you need that love to show up for you, there's nothing. When there is a pandemic and people are struggling and running, you run. Because there's no revelation of God's protection over your life. Okay. You get it? So invite the Holy Spirit in your private hangouts with God. It doesn't have to be like woo, woo and crazy and weird. Not really. You can just say, the Holy Spirit, help me in my time hanging out. And it can be you reading the Bible. It can be you just talking to God. It can be you just asking questions. Just set the time apart and say, God, I'm giving you this time. Show me what to do. You'd be surprised what will happen during that time. The other thing you should do is to have a Bible you can understand. And I'm laughing when I say this because, you know, sometimes it feels spiritual to read the King James Version and you understand nothing. You go through the same words over and over you're like, what's happening? Just to finish one chapter, you have to go back and forth. And at the end of it, you're like, Okay, that sounded deep because we think we should say that saith the Lord. What our but that is how people spoke when the Bible was written in the King James era. We have versions that interpret to our English without diluting the message. Get a version that works for you. I love the New Living Translation. I love the New International Version. I love the Passion Version. I love the Message Version. Then I also read the NKJV sometimes. It's it makes it real for me. It makes it understandable to me, right? And therefore, I can apply it to my life. It becomes relevant. I can go through it and say, oh, this is what the story is saying without having to struggle. It might feel spiritual to struggle with dictionaries and everything, but it doesn't achieve a purpose. You want to be able to hear God. You want to be able to talk to him. You want to be able to relate. And having a version that works like that is important. You could even have multiple versions. And I love the Bible app. Get in your app store. Get into your Google Play. Get the Bible app. You have like multiple versions at your fingertips, not paying for them, free. There is no excuse. So for me, when I read like a verse in NLT, New Living Translation, which is my main version, I read it again in New King James. I read it again in Amplified. It just changes meaning and makes it alive to me. That's one thing you should really apply immediately. So after you have read, just take one lesson that you can apply to your life. Just one lesson. So sometimes you read and you're like, oh, that was amazing. Esther was such an amazing girl. Oh, nice. And you move on. Tomorrow you read something else. Oh, Nehemiah. Then you, oh, Paul, so bold. Oh, the believers were praying. What are you reading for? I love this. a verse in Romans. I hope by the time I'm sharing this, I have Googled it and it's showing on your screen or in the description. But there's a verse in Romans that says the Bible was written for our learning. So it's not there just to entertain. It's there to show us that this is how God works. This is how God treated Moses. He can treat you the same way. God was trying to show us his personality, his character, his paths, his thought processes. So that we can tap into it and build a relationship based on that. That's what the Bible is for. It's not just history. Like, oh, that's nice. It's for you to say, oh my goodness, that's how you defended Joseph? You can defend me now. Oh, that's how you preserved Sarah? You can preserve me now. That's how you answered Hannah? You can answer me now. That is what the Bible is for. So after you read, ask, Holy Spirit, what am I taking away from this? If you have started it right, you have started it in different versions, you prayed when you started, you have something that is like blinking, like this is something you must do. You know, like I read the book of Daniel and I was reading Daniel chapter one. I had read it over and over, but at that specific time, I read a scripture that was saying Daniel was chosen. I mean, like there were a few people who were chosen because they were good looking and healthy looking. And I was overweight at that point in my life. And I read that and it jumped at me and says, see, there's some doors that are not opening because you're not aligned, because you're not taking charge of your body. You're not making the change that you can make. And that's something other people will read and they'll be like, no, it's not meaning that. But to me, it meant that. And that was when I started my weight loss journey and I lost a lot of weight, like 20 kgs or more from that first verse. 
right? So there's always something you can apply. There are some stories you think nothing will come out of this, but God is there. The word is not written just for entertainment or just random knowing. It is there to train us and teach us in the ways of God and support us through life. So take one lesson and apply it in your life. So why am I sharing all this? Because I know that most of us are trying to build something. We're working against the grain, right? Everybody's going this way and you're like, I think we can be better. I think I can build a business. I think I can fix the relationship. I think I can get that promotion. I don't want to be in this place anymore. If you're like that, then I encourage you to get to know God personally. Get not the general word, but get a specific word for yourself. When you read the Bible, you see people with specific words, right? Every word will not move you. Every word is not for you, but there's a specific word that God is speaking in this season for your life. And if you're able to grab onto that, it will serve you. It will help you. And I love this quote that says, God does not support missions that he doesn't initiate. And so when you start something from the word of God, you can come back to him and say, I read this. You did this for Joseph and I'm standing on it. Tell me where I'm getting it wrong. So having a relationship, a personal relationship with God is going to fire you up to be amazing and to achieve great things in your life. It's going to protect you from comparison, competition. It's going to help you be bold and achieve a purposeful life. We want at the end of this life to live with a bang. You don't want to leave this world thinking, this life thinking, oh my goodness, I could have done better. What did I, why did I do with my, oh my goodness, I should. No, you want to live this life knowing you had done your part. You're like, I finished the rest. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next level, right? That's why I'm encouraging you to go in deep on this God factor. Get your instructions from God so that you can do the great things that God has intended for you in this earth. Thank you for stopping by. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you want to do more work, I invite you to check out the On Your Lane Challenge. It is a seven-day free challenge that will guide you in different aspects of your life so that you can learn to hear God in those different aspects of your life and get instructions that apply for powerful, powerful living. Check it out in the description box. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And one thing that you're going to do from this video, leave it in the comments. I'd love to interact with you. And if you want more free resources that will help your faith, please check out these videos. They're really powerful and they'll equip you for the great work that God has for you. Thank you for stopping by. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.